Well, hi. Here we are live again, another Thursday morning with the Techno Crime Fighter Joint Investigation Team. Uh, ready to come forth with whatever uh, new information we've uh, gleaned from all the, the research of these four wonderful researchers. Uh, before we were talking about uh, different things that we really should cover. Uh, some of them are, are like current events, like the Las Vegas shooter, the, Las, the, most, the current, most current false flag shooter. Uh, then we had a, a police officer that was caught urinating in the White House. That could be an interesting topic. A wonderful thing happened this week. I'm hoping it's wonderful. Uh, Karen uh, Stewart was interviewed by RT, and I'm, I'm anxious to hear about that. And then later on in the program, we're probably going to be joined by uh, Catherine Horton. And Catherine Horton and I have been talking about uh, the death of uh, Hugh Hefner and uh, his implications with pedophilia. It seems like pedophilia is kind of underpinning all of the different uh, things that we look at. I knew this would happen as we get deeper and deeper into the deep state. I knew that the pedophilia undercurrent would be there. And uh, so here we go. Um, before we uh, get into any real uh, other topics, I'd really like to have uh, Karen talk a little bit about her her interview. Karen, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I had had an invitation from uh, Mr. Stone for several months and was not able to really get down to D.C. and, and do a TV interview, but I was able to do it a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it was very interesting. He said, now, because this is Russian television and we are in the United States, in D.C., he said, I really don't want to get into gang stalking. And we only had about an hour. So I said, OK. Mm -hmm. So I what happened in uh, at NSA and I was able to get in the fact that NSA itself engages in gang stalking. So I was very happy that I was able to connect that because people can go with it where they may. And then maybe in a future interview, we will go deeper into it. But it's, it, it's interesting because I just saw a, an article saying mm -hmm. that uh, RT TV might mm -hmm. actually leave states because they're getting pressure. So I'm sure that NSA was not happy to be <laughs> outed on Russian TV as doing gang stalking. So I don't know whether that's a accumulation of them reporting the truth and the uh, American deep state doesn't like it, or whether the revelation that NSA participates in and conducts gang stalking uh, illegally was maybe the straw that broke the camel's back. So um, I'm not sure. We'll have to see where that goes. But I was very pleased to do it. And um, I was very honored that uh, Mr. Stone was interested in hearing it. But I, like I said, I was rather limited due to politics as to what I could cover, but I made sure to cover the fact that NSA does gang stalking. So there is your federal government connection. So I thought that was very important to make. I think so too. I also would really like to know whether there are, uh, whether Russia and uh, their intelligence agencies are doing gang stalking also. Since they're all connected, I would be, I'd be hard pressed to think that they're not gang stalking also. And that might be the reason why they don't want you to mention it because it's, I, ca it I can't be. think that it's not a worldwide program. Yeah. Well, you know, in the last few months, actually, some of the uh, American diplomats in Russia, uh, when Kerry was Secretary of State, they were complaining of what we call, or what the Germans call, Zerzetsung, being uh, used against them. They'd come home and find out that somebody had, you know, peed in their house or killed their dog or they were being followed, et cetera, et cetera. So it sounds like the Russian Cheka which are the secret police, uh, were doing that to the Americans to show them their displeasure at American-Russian relations under uh, John Kerry as Secretary of State. So, you know, this is historically, this has been used by the German secret police, and you have to imagine it was used throughout Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union, and they still do it you know, on occasion. But now whether they are so viciously abusive to their own people right now, I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out. It would. But it go would. ahead. Because he's, he's encouraging uh, 
population growth. Uh, he's giving uh, Putin is, and he's giving away tracts of land in the forests for uh, young couples. Well, he's couples. also yeah, and he's also in inviting any American with Russian heritage to come back, and they'll and they'll give them land in I think Siberia, <laughs> but they're trying to populate, and they say if you've got Russian heritage, come back to Russia, and we'll set you up. You know, work here, live here. You know, very progressive. Yeah. Yeah. But they're our darkest enemies, Karen. They're the ones that uh, disrupted the American election. And, you know, <laughs> Hillary would be safely in there if it hadn't been for Putin. Oh, dear God. So, <laughs> anyway, enough sarcasm. Yeah, boogeyman. I'm, I'm, Karen, I'm I think so it's happy. fantastic that you did that interview with Sean Stone at our. Looking forward to watching it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised that there were certain strictures put on your interview at all, but I guess that speaks to the politics of the entire situation. Um, I'm thrilled right. though that you were able to talk about your own experience, you know, and about NSA security. And were you able to talk also about U.S. naval security, engaging and stalking, and so forth? Um, no, because the hour went pretty quickly. So I actually only got to the point where I'd been put on administrative leave and it was pretty clear that I was going to be fired and then the hour was up. So, but like I said, I made sure to get in uh, the fact that NSA does gang stalking so the feds cannot deny that they're involved. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. That's literally, you're doing a service to the nation by speaking out about that. Were you at all able to talk about directed energy weapons? Um, not in the interview. I did talk to Sean about it and he didn't want to get into that at this point, you know, cause I, I figure I got a foot in the door. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, if people want to, other people want to interview me and allow me to speak, uh, to that, that's great. Um, but I think that this alone will start people to wonder about NSA and they should, because it is absolutely rogue and out of control. And, uh, like I said, a foot in the door is better than standing there at a closed door. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'll take it and we'll see where it goes from here. Wonderful. I'm really thrilled about that. And you know, Karen, as you know, I, I stand by, as always, ready to interview you about directed energy weapons and the NSA anytime. Oh, <laughs> and sure, sure. And we should indeed set a date for a podcast and do that, which actually possibly is a segue to the other subject that we wanted to talk about today, because, you know, um, there's another subject that I would like to do a podcast with you on, and that has to do with Myron May. And perhaps you can talk a little bit about that. Um, the whole Myron May connection, the Tallahassee, Florida connection, and um, how the, the whole subject of child abuse, ch pedophilia, uh, and, and so forth, being hidden under child protection services comes into play here. Yeah, it's pretty horrific. I mean, I went down to... to I had been going down to Tallahassee, Florida, where my family is, since uh, 2011 for about half a year because NSA had fired me at the end of October 2010 and I said you know why should I stay in Columbia Maryland with all this creeps who believed NSA and were you know gang stalking me and thinking ill of me after almost 30 years of serving my country and protecting their little butts so I was rather dismayed and I said well I'm going to go down to Florida and spend it with my family because I'm lucky enough to have parents in their 80s who are still here so I spent half a year um, from 2011, half a year, 2012, 2013, 2014, no problem. And um, in early 2015 is when I asked my lawyer, who is my lawyer for my EEOC case, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission case, which basically is challenging uh, NSA's firing me for bogus re reasons. And it's been sitting on the shelf for about seven years. So um, I asked my, my uh my lawyer to subpoena information that basically would identify NSA executive Eric Hageman as the man who had broken into my home in 2006 and placed bugs in it to include a burst bug that we heard um, nightly. So um, we subpoenaed that information and NSA went crazy. 
They absolutely went crazy. And they sent people down to do some kind of secret exercise in Tallahassee with, well, actually what they did was that they were st uh, setting up stalking harassment in Tallahassee using the FBI InfraGuard. So that occurred from uh, early 2015, about April or so 2015, the InfraGuard, and I call them InfraTards, um, were stalking and harassing me. And then by late November 2016, they were started to use directed energy weapons. And by the summer of 2016, I had been trying to educate the imbeciles who call themselves the Leon County Sheriff's Department as to the existence of these types of weapons and telling that I had observed and I knew exactly who the, who the participants were in the neighborhood. And I had more license plates of people who were stalking, harassing than I can even count at this point. So I was trying to very calmly, logically explain to the to the Leon County Police, I mean Sheriff's Department, that this was going on, and I used Myron May as an example. Now Myron May had been a very educated, intelligent uh, young black lawyer who um, had family in the area. He came back to Tallahassee, and he was actually working to try to free the child of a woman who had had her child taken away by uh, Florida Protective Services. But what it had really happened was that somebody in a pedophilia ring had tagged this child you know, as someone he wanted. You know, Karen, Karen yeah. just for a minute there, there was an audio blip, at least at my end. I don't know if it was recorded on, you know, everybody's end. But okay. if you could kindly repeat just what you said, he was trying to free and that's where it froze. Okay. Uh, Myron May was trying to uh, basically expose a pedophilia ring that was within the, the um, Florida Child Protective Services. And he was trying to get the child of someone he knew freed from the Tallahassee Protective Services because the child had been tagged as somebody they wanted access to. So um, basically charges were made up against the mother and they took her child and he was trying to get the child back for her when he got targeted by the pedophilia ring in Tallahassee, Florida. So they hired and paid the scumbag uh, stalkers in Tallahassee to stalk and harass him and use directed energy weapons on him. Now the history of that is readily available online because he made several videos talking about the fact that he was being not only stalked, he had no idea why and what these, who these people were, but he was also getting hit with directed energy weapons and suffering very greatly. Now he had gone to the police and the sheriff's department and been blown off. Okay, so I'm explaining this to an older Tallahassee, well, um, Leon County Sheriff's Department deputy. Um, he was dark haired, white guy with kind of a mustache, thin black mustache like his hair. And I explained all this to him and I said, now, here I come. You know, I mean, uh, Myron May basically ended up going crazy and shooting people uh, in the Strozier Law Library in Tallahassee in February 2014 which was several months before I came back to Tallahassee. And um, of course I learned about that and I knew exactly what had happened. And I was trying to explain this to the older uh, sheriff's deputy. And I said, don't you think that if somebody explains this and tries to get help, and they're telling you that there's a, a gang stalking organization in Tallahassee operating under your nose and using what are classified as weapons of mass destruction and are highly illegal for any civilians to have and they're highly illegal to use on any non-combatant civilians. I said, don't you think it's rather odd that two people would be telling you exactly the same thing? Don't you think that you may want to investigate what I'm telling you? And he just looked at me and said, no, we were told he was crazy. And so they blew me off in the tw summer of 2016. Well, in uh, the fall of 2016, guess what was found in Tallahassee? A pedophilia ring that went up into Florida state government. And so there, it was in the news that you know, they had busted them. Now, did they know to look because I waved it in their face? You know, and of course, it, no, no apology, no recognition for the fact that I alerted them to it. Um, and then they, you know, 
and still abusive toward me. So it's very interesting that, um, that they weren't interested until it really, until the pressure started to come out to, uh, for them to actually do their jobs. And I found it very interesting too, that when I went to the Florida um, Leon County Sheriff's Department and asked them a few questions that the gentleman on duty went out to his car, took a handful of folders and looked for my name in the folders, opened it up, looked and, and then put the folders back in his trunk, slammed the trunk shut and said, no, we're not gonna help you. So there seems That's to be very interesting. It, it's as if there's yeah, a special it, list of names that police officers carry about. Oh, is it the sheriff's department? Sheriff's department officers. Sheriff's department carry mm -hmm. about in their vehicles, and uh, then they ID people whom they stop or who approach them and uh, run their names up against this list, and then decide whether decide whether or not they're going to help them. Exactly. And it was very telling to me that in, uh, I mean, the sheriff's department kept saying, oh, this is above our pay grade. You need to go to the FBI. And then when I would call the FBI in Tallahassee, Florida and explain, this is Karen Stewart. I, I'm a retired national security agency intelligence analyst, and I would like to talk to you about something. Then they would hang up. And when I tried to come see them, they refused to let me in the building. Refused to talk to me, refused to let me in the building. So they didn't want to know. And you're talking about the FBI, right? In Florida, they didn't Ta want to... Tallahassee FBI. Tallahassee. And I, yes, Tallahassee FBI. And um, I later discerned that Annie White from the Tallahassee FBI, and, along with uh, Mr. Kennedy from the FDLE, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, which is essentially a fusion center. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, who is in the um, domestic terrorism unit, those two were in my neighborhood at the homes of the people using directed energy weapons on us. And when I say us, I mean my elderly 80 something year old parents and four large dogs. And it didn't matter to these scumbag neighbors that not only were they trying to kill me, but very likely they would kill my elderly parents before they would kill me. So I saw them on numerous occasions in the neighborhood. And I know that because I was getting blown off when I went to the FDLE and, uh, you know, via phone trying to call them, they would basically hang up or divert me to people who had no idea what was going on. So I said, all right, I'm going to go to the FDLE. Well, one interesting thing that happened when I went to the FDLE was that that was the first time um, for months when I was not hit with directed energy weapons. They wouldn't hit the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, but they would hit the Sheriff's Department when I went there, and they would hit the Tallahassee Police Department when I went there, but they wouldn't hit the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. So I sat in the lobby for 20 minutes to 30 minutes and waiting for somebody from the domestic terrorism unit to come out to speak to me about what was going on. I had written them a letter. I had written the FBI in Jacksonville and Miami letters to sent them a uh, return receipt and never got a return receipt. So they were inter intercepted and, and not uh, sent to where they were supposed to be. And of course, when you call um, the post office security people, they never return your call. They don't, you know, when it has something to do with this. But anyway, I was at the Florida Department of Law Enforcement enjoying not being hit by directed energy weapons for the first time in several months when um, three people from the domestic terrorism unit came out, one of which was Mr. Kennedy, who identified himself. The other was Annie White, who has an office at the FBI and the FDLE. And a third lady, I did not recognize her. But the two, Kennedy and White, were people I'd seen in my neighborhood and at the houses of known perpetrators. So when I tried to present them with this letter, Mr. Kennedy looked at me and smirked and said, why don't you just give it to the FCC? That's their job. <laughs> and he would not take it. And he was looking at the other women uh, as if he wanted them to acknowledge how very clever he was being. So they blew me off and uh, I left. And just as soon as I left the FDLE, I got hit with directed energy weapons yet again. So I think that's very telling. I think yes, basically absolutely. that the criminals, the criminals were not hitting their own. 
Yes, this is such an extraordinary story. The very fact that one, the FDLE lobby was being protected, that you weren't being hit with dues when you were sitting over there. And that these two people, Mr. Kennedy and uh, Annie White, one from the FBI, Miss White is from the FBI, and Mr. Kennedy is from the FDLE, right? The Domestic Terror Unit. Right. <laughs> and are they, they, did they listen to your, uh, did you ever have a chance to speak to them about directed energy weapons and being hit with them in your neighborhood? Uh, I did. That's why I went there. And I told them and I, I said, I've got this letter that I've written to you. I'm mm -hmm. explaining everything further in this letter. I would like you to take it and review it. And they refused. And they actually mentioned the FCC. They said, oh, that's a matter for the FCC. Yeah. And yeah. Meanwhile, they, they were prowling around in your neighborhood, sitting around with your neighbors, the very neighbors from whose houses you are getting emanations of electromagnetic radiation. Yes. And I would remind you, I'm extremely good with faces. Mm -hmm. That's true. You are. Well, I think at this point, I certainly know about that because I've published many of your caricatures, uh, Karen. We should point out that Karen is a brilliant artist and a caricaturist, and she has a photographic memory for faces. So even if she doesn't have a camera on hand, she's able to look at a person's face and commit it to paper, which is extraordinary. Uh, it's sort of one of those incredible talents, you know, so you're oh, right. You. You are right. So very interesting, however, you know, it, I, it probably doesn't need much detective work to put this together, right? To put two and two together. It with, really doesn't. Uh, with the domestic terror unit of the, of the FDLE and the local FBI completely uh, refusing to address the issue of being hit with directed energy weapons and then, and then being seen in your neighborhood talking to the very people who are indeed housing and pointing directed energy weapons at your oh. house not only seen in the neighborhood, but staying with neighbors. Staying with neighbors? Karen. Yes. Yes. Interesting. I, I had something ha like that happen to me when I first moved to Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I, I was renting a room in a neighborhood and the house directly in front of her house began to be visited starting about nine o'clock at night by what I assumed were police officers and they would stay there until just before daybreak every morning i would go to bed as normal i would wake up be awakened actually with the the voice of of that person in my head and at, at about mid midway through the night and whenever i'd get up and look out those cars would be out there across the street so i got smart i started taking pictures of the cars i could see and one, one, one evening, actually, as I was getting home, one of the ladies that I thought I recognized as having been working, was working for the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department, was standing on that sidewalk. And I did get a picture of her. And then I began to report to, to her that there were people from the police department apparently coming to the house of a known felon who had been a drug dealer and stay in the night and perhaps being quote unquote trained on the skills of the person who has been handling me for the last 27 plus years. When they were, when I contacted us base about my complaints, I was instructed to go to the police department and make a report she said, make sure he gives you a report number. Then you go back and get the report. Um, contact the victim's witness director of the Montgomery Sheriff's Department and let her know that you need her assistance. I did all of that. However, like you, I took my report with me, the reports that I had filed in, in Tennessee, and get, tried to give them to the officer that came to meet me. He would not take them. When I called back for the written a report, um, yeah. finally someone gave me the tip that I could get the call report, and I do have a copy of the call report. So they can't say that I did not ever make contact. But the point is that they were actually using the house of a known felon every night to come and see what was to be trained in how to what remote neural monitor me. Me, I don't know, but I do know that that person who has been handling me for what seems like 20, at, at least 27 years plus, uh, his voice would be the one that I would hear when I would go to sleep. His voice would be the one that would wake me up 
in the night and whatever else happened, they would be witnesses to. You know, it's a shame when the, the domestic terrorism unit of any law enforcement is uh, basically tasked with committing domestic terrorism. I had one full, lady. It's a full service agency. <laughs> you don't have crime, we'll provide it and then, and right. then maybe we'll look sure. into it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I mean, I had one woman on Facebook say, um, concerning, and this might be a segue, concerning the shooter in Las Vegas, she said, you know, ISIS has claimed that it's responsible and the FBI says, no, the, ISIS has nothing to do with this. And she said, it's really a shame when you can't figure out who to believe, ISIS or the FBI. <laughs> you know, Karen, I'm afraid we lost some of what you talked about when you were talking about the domestic terror unit, I think. You said it's a shame that the domestic terror unit and then everything. Okay, what I was saying was that it's a shame that the domestic terrorism unit for law enforcement now are the people committing domestic terrorism. We Amazing, it happened again. Uh, <laughs> all right, I, I can't was saying believe that. Um, I'm so sorry. I can't believe this. See, no, this okay. is happening. I'm, I'm wondering if it's happening at my computer. You know, I'm trying to switch off my mic. But because, but if, if I'm being hacked, which I'm beginning to suspect, you know, because I've been hacked now for two weeks doing my podcast, then they're hacking the feed that's going out from my computer, which is so... Well, I, I, I'm hearing everything, uh, Ramola, and I haven't heard anything in the chat that it's been interrupted. Oh, really? So, oh, okay. I'm really glad to hear that. So you heard everything fine then? Yes. I, uh, Chris and Don and all, if, is it, are, are we having issues of hearing out there? All you guys in the chat, if you're listening, the chat's. It's interesting because the chats go off on like tangents. Yes. And sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes, clear and clean. Uh, okay, so I'm okay. definitely Paul. hearing a lot of audio interruptions, but if you are not, perhaps you should be the arbiter, Paul. If you hear anything, can you stop any of us who's speaking and ask us to repeat? And I won't do it. I will do that. But, I will okay, do that. Okay, perfect. I, I, I would do that anyway because uh, some of the things that are said here are so heavyweight that they they uh it's 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 great to have them repeat it twice anyway so i, I <laughs> do try to stop that's true I let's try to stop yeah paul if you want to you can repeat to ramola because i'm afraid to try to do it a third time because they may cut uh, me off <laughs> okay we were talking about a full service agency they provide the st the uh the crime, and then they clean up after it, but they don't even Ah, do yes, yes, that is a very important thing. I wonder why they don't want me to hear that particular line. So <laughs> I'm glad you said it twice, though, Karen, so now the whole world can hear it. So, so don't worry. In any case, I can catch up to, you know, the, the tape afterwards, after it's recorded and everything. So right. go ahead, and I won't interrupt. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, I was going to give one example of uh, them being in the neighborhood, I saw them at the homes of 1821 Sageway. I saw them at the home of 1818 Sageway. I saw them at the home of 5050 Icicle Hill. Okay. And the 5050 Icicle Hill was very interesting because I was walking my dogs one evening. I went down the, um, the road that was 5050, uh, that 5050 Icicle Hill was on. And, um, the people who lived there, an elderly couple, came back from apparently an, a vacation and they had luggage in their car. They were starting to unload and go into the house. When they went to their $300,000 RV sitting in the, in the uh, driveway that actually faced our home and had line of sight to our home, and they knocked on the door. Well, why would you knock on the door of your own RV? So I stood there kind of behind a tree watching. And... Um, two people came out of the RV with bedding. I thought that was very strange. So they all four went into the house. Now, why would you have two younger people and they're maybe their thirties stay in your RV while you locked up your house and left for a couple days and then come back, knock on the door and they brought their bedding back into the home. 
And I stood there thinking, this is very strange. Who would you trust to stay in your RV, but not trust to be in your home? Okay. So I still stood there and everybody went to the house. And then a minute or two later, uh, a younger gentleman came out with a beard and uh, Mr. Kennedy has a beard. And um, he went into the RV and he kept the door open. He started flicking switches. And one switch was a red light, which you use when you don't want people to know that you're in somewhere because a red light does not carry very far. So that's a light you use to function in a, a dark space without people being able to see through the window that you're in there. Okay, so he flicked that on and off. He did a systems check for whatever reason. And then he flicked on another uh, switch that had a very strange mechanical bird sound to it. Now, I had reported to the deputies that the people who went into the woods months before with the devices would come out in the morning. They'd let them off at night uh, just after, after sunset, and then they'd pick them up just about at sunrise. And the signals given for, I'm here, pick me up, sounded like mechanical bird sounds. So this guy flicked on a switch and there was your mechanical bird sound. So he flicks that off and he flicks on another switch and I actually start to feel a directed energy weapon. And then he flicks it off and the directed energy weapon stops. And he flicks on another switch with the mechanical bird sounds again, flicked it off, turned off all the lights, left the RV, locked it up and went into the house. So that's kind of clear. And, um, Annie White, I had seen at that house, and she also had been at the, you know, like I said, the three houses, and on one occasion, she dressed in men's clothes that were obviously too big for her, and took the neighbor's dog down the street to another location where I had discerned that um, there were yet an, another couple with children who were involved, and they had, I'd seen them aim a directed energy weapon at me, so I knew that they were involved. And these were the same people at 2088 Cynthia Drive who were renting and who a detective had investigated and said, Karen, they've been wiped clean. There is no background on these people, and only the federal government can do that. And these people also had tempested the entire second story. And if you don't know what tempest means, uh, at NSA, if you've tempested the windows, you've basically taken copper wiring and put it over the windows because you can point a laser device that is meant for hearing. You can point it at somebody's window and pick up every sound in that house because of the vibrations. Now, if you tempest your window, you either put copper mesh like NSA does, or you take mylar and you put it in the windows so that people cannot see the type of lights in that room, and they cannot pick up emanations to tell them, oh, this is a computer downloading something from a satellite. So you put that in all the windows so people cannot tell that there are strange uh, signals coming from the second, second floor of a home where that type of signal shouldn't be. So I followed this person dressed as a man, and it was Annie White. She walked the neighbor's dog down to uh, Cynthia, and she did that about midnight or so. So I noticed that pattern of behavior. And they always went, she always went to this home. And uh, very, very obvious that they were in collusion. And uh, well, there's a lot. But uh, I was basically discerning who was involved and who was not in the neighborhood. And the efforts were being led by the FDLE and the feds in 2088. You mean 2008? Uh, 20, no, 2088, Cynthia, is where these people ah, okay. were renting. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, perfect. You know, actually, Karen, that is an incredible story. That is major news. I mean, we're talking about an FBI agent prowling around in your neighborhood and talking to the neighbors and hanging well, out at all hours, showing them how, hours, showing them how involving to them. To use the to devices, yeah. Mm -hmm. Total collusion. And you say you've actually seen that particular family point a device at you. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That, that's, 100%. Report, that's definitely reportable information. I would certainly like to pursue that further and record that and report it. It's absolutely astonishing because, you know, many people don't know that the FBI is very closely involved. The FBI oh, yeah. is involved in this. It's they're very involved shy. in murder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're murderers. 
I'd love to see your write up on it, Romola, with pictures, drawings yes. of what happened going in and out to make it really graphic for everybody so they could understand how yes. nefarious this whole operation is. Let's plan to do an article on this, Karen, because it's actually disclosure. It's disclosure about the FBI. And I think there's so much lies and deception going on today. I mean, look at the Las Vegas shooting, right? Something like this makes me so disheartened because very, you know, the news is trickling out now. I think there's enough news to tell us that this is a false flag. It's a psyop. This guy was an absolute patsy, total setup. And then you have the FBI and the local police standing in front of well, I, I hesitate to call them reporters, you know, standing in, standing in front of these people with cameras from the corporate media bastion, um, shooting questions at them. And then there, there's the story promulgated over the fake news radio waves and um, online waves that, um, you know, this, this, was a, this was a demented man. He did this on his own. He lugged up, I don't know how many rounds of ammunition and how many huge uh, firearms and assault weapons up to whichever floor of this hotel. 30, 34th, 34th floor, 34th floor of this hotel. 42 rifles. 42 rifles. And nobody noticed that, you know, a man with 42 <laughs> rifles was going up and down or just carrying them all in one go and taking them up to his room and then planning. <laughs> yeah, that's, it yeah, seems like a scene from a movie. I mean, but what are you going to do with 42 rifles? I mean, really, unless you're Rambo or somebody. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I did listen to a radio uh, interview with a neighbor of this man. He said he was an ex-Marine. He, the neighbor, was an ex-Marine. He was younger than the man. The man was 84. And he said that he lived next door to him for several months and that he uh, had befriended the man, he and another gentleman, and the three of them very often uh, went up to a local bar and just sat there drinking beer talking. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, knowing that I was a Marine, you'd think this guy, if he had any interest in guns, would have bragged to me about his collection. But he never did. He never mentioned guns. He ne had no interest in them. And he said, I will tell you flat out, I can't, you know, that in my opinion, this man did not do it. He did not do it. He could not have done it. His personality, um, his background was such that, no, he couldn't have done this. He said, I don't for a minute believe that this man did this. And he said, besides the fact, the gun that they said that he was using makes a very definite flash. And he said, if you look at the videos, that is not present. He said that gun was not, he said that gun was not used. And so he gave, uh, like I said, he gave a very interesting interview and he lined out everything that told him that this was absolutely, totally false. And how convenient that the man was found dead so that he couldn't deny it. And I noted on the picture of the man, and they didn't show his face, but they did show a body, that he was wearing gloves. Well, of course, that would mean that there was no uh, gunshot residue on his hands, but it would be on the gloves. Well, how easy it is, is it for somebody to use gloves, shoot a gun, and then put the gloves on the patsy? Very easy. I mean, I, I don't even know why they do this, because they make so many mistakes that people rip it apart to begin with, but then they go with the narrative that the unicorns did it, and everybody's supposed to believe it. So it's getting insulting. Yeah. It is. You know, I mean, you feel bad it's, for the people what being, being being tricked by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and it's I understand because, now. They're, now they're finding there are multiple shooters involved, right? More than one. That's what so witnesses forth. are saying. That's what witnesses are saying. Yes. So this man was murdered. You know, this innocent man was murdered to make him look like a nutcase, and probably murdered by the FBI. Well, it's, it's, it's such an obvious false flag. There's no CCT cameras. You know how many cameras there are in uh, Las Vegas? Everything is under scrutiny all the time. That's true. Nothing. So it's such, an obvious, it's such an obvious false flag. But see, the thing is, it separates the population. There are those of us who can see it. We know that they do this. And we know the, the app. It's a gun control, white guy. You know, that, that whole scenario uh, that they try to put up. You can just look at what they're trying to do and then go back to the false flag. But, be, but I did want to mention one thing, uh, Karen. 
uh, before we go too much further. The FBI and the local police, the one nice thing about techno crime fighters is we name names. We tell you where they are, who they work for, and we name names. We're like inviting a lawsuit. It used to be in the United States, if you'd slander somebody and they would sue you, then you would straighten it out. But since, oh, the 90s, uh, slander, uh, when you slander somebody and they don't come back, there's an assumption that it's true. Otherwise, they'd sue you, you know? So I think, you know, in terms of what we're saying week after week, uh, time after time, we're accusing people of these crimes, but they're not defending themselves. So to me, in my old fashioned way of thinking, uh, you're guilty. Um, and isn't there long something, time ago, isn't there something, go ahead. Isn't there something called there something the counterlows? A what? Can't you count to see if somebody sues you for defamation or slander? Oh dear, did we lose uh, Paul? No, I, I, I don't know whether that's true. Um, I know that they're suing people that are filing FOIA requests now. Yes. I read that. Uh, mm -hmm. If you file a FOIA request, you could get sued. But uh, it's that's funny. That's so absurd. A FOIA request is a request for, for public information. You know, it's yeah. a request right, for public exactly. records. But state and local authorities have started to sue people who give them freedom of information requests. Uh, on what basis? You know, on, on I don't even know what basis that they could do that. Major crime, really. Well, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, they I'm saying on a. Law. Yeah, I so, know. On a non normal common yeah. sense basis, that sort of contravenes the actual point of the FOIA request. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's the idea. Well, but, I will. Here's another ahead, way that they, that they just very, make a quick point. Here's another way that they uh, obstruct you. I uh, sent an extensive uh, Florida Sunshine Act request, which was the state equivalent of FOIA. I sent an extensive one to the um, Leon County Sheriff's Department, and they they countered with, "Okay, but we'll we have to charge you two thousand dollars for our time." Right, right. So I mean, obviously, I couldn't do it. Well, but the thing is, you as a taxpayer are paying for the people that are working there and would be working there no matter what, no matter what they're doing. So that's that's a uh, that's a that's a that's a ridiculous thing anyway. But I mean, we've talked about Randy Webster week after week. Do we hear anything from Randy Webster's lawyers? Why this is a fine, upstanding young guy. You know, we, we don't hear anything about that. He just that. Yes, it's a very interesting he... point, Paul. You know, I've also wondered about it because, you know, we all have named names, I think. You mean, I, I've named names in some of my podcast interviews and so forth. And nobody's come back at us and said, you know, you have no right to say this, that, or the other. Actually, we do have a right to say this, that, or the other because, in fact, it's the truth. And it's also yeah. sharing of suspicions openly, you know. So, so if we well, were law... I mean, Randy could sue us and we could settle it in court. We could lay out our evidence, which we have 27 years worth of, mm -hmm. and uh, phone calls and da-da-da-da-da. But you won't find them suing us because we're correct. Well, what Randall Webster is doing is basically crippling Millicent from the last time that she was on. He's uh, attacking uh, her leg and has told her that essentially he's going to cut off the circulation, make her have it amputated so that's how he's getting back at her right it's horrible it's horrible what he's yeah. doing but he's yeah. he won't deny it it's horrible I mean, what he's doing it. and and the US Air Force is sitting on its hands and doing nothing. I think at this point, you know, Catherine launched a massive Twitter campaign and I tried to join in and tweet as much as possible. I even tweeted to this person called Dr. Heather Wilson, who apparently is the Secretary of the Air Force. You know, I tweeted my article to her and I tweeted, retweeted Catherine's tweets to her saying this guy's got to be arrested. He's a serial killer and a psychopath who has access to BCI tech and to satellite technology, but who is assaulting women and assaulting 
in particular, Millicent, nonstop. So how is this not something that the US Air Force is responsible for? And how is it they don't care that he has this equipment, which logically he shouldn't have if he's not still in the military and it shouldn't be used for assaulting civilians. So how is it they don't care about s supposedly stolen covert weaponry being used against civilians and the US Air Force doesn't care? I mean, do they have like a, a US Air Force Walmart where you walk in and purchase this stuff and walk out again? You know, assaults or yes. And you know, this guy, you, he's gotten SEER training. And it's very important to mention this. SEER training is survival, evasion, resistance, escape training. It's torture technique training you know, that the Air Force is still putting airmen through. I think they may have pulled out a few aspects of that training, such as waterboarding, which, as we all know, gained quite some fame, you know, through Guantanamo <laughs> and with Mitchell and Jessen and co. Um, but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a guy who was trained in these ghastly torture techniques and who actually trained other people. I think he was a trainer of, of trainers. He trained people. Uh, in this in these techniques and then now he's using them he's gotten this contract and this is what he has told Millicent you see so this is why we have this information to start with because he's told her this that he's using his seer training he's using his morse code training and he's using highly sophisticated neurotechnology which is brain computer interface technology along with a satellite access to a satellite yeah. I wonder if they're pointing to our broadcast saying, see, even if you reveal yourself, even if you tell them what we're doing, you're still safe. Mm -hmm. I hate to think that that might be happening. I hope not, Paul. I'm hoping that the very fact that we have gotten so public with this, I've published that article, Millicent's story, we've aired several times, you know, in our conversations. And now with Randall Webster's name being revealed, we've kind of moved to a new level here of uh, exposure, you know, of these programs and this evil and this lunacy that's going on. Because obviously, Randy Webster is not the only one with access to BCI tech and a satellite. You know, no, there are others. Not. Yeah, there are others, and they may be either individuals or they may be groups, they may be universities, they may be research institutions who are freely um, experimenting on human brains. And it's absolutely horrifying. You know, as you know, I'm working on, on Chris Burton's interview currently, and I'm hoping to, you know, release that very soon. And I have one podcast with Chris that's out there. And Chris's story is extraordinary. He is a V2K victim, you know, a voice to skull victim. And not merely is, um, our, is voice to skull military technology being used on his, on his brain. Everything beyond that has also happened. EEG heterodyning, EEG cloning has been, you know, directed at him. In other words, his neural networks have been mapped. His entire brain system is being taken over by an external person who is being connected with him and is being called his clone. Information about this is in Project Soul Catcher, Robert Duncan, CIA whistleblower has talked quite a bit about this. Various other people have talked about this. And Chris Burton, I, will, I see, is one of the uh, current emerging witnesses and um, whose, whose words and voice is, I think, going to resonate across time. I just, I just sense it because everything that Chris is saying is profoundly important. And what he's really pointing to is one of the most dastardly programs ever invented. And who is running this? You know, these are COVID ops, black ops agencies that are running this. And it, the horrifying thing is, you know, the, the DOD is all, is all right up there in it. Um, so it's the DOD, the US Air Force, the US Navy, the CIA and the DIA. I would name those five agencies. And of course, with the help of people like the NRO, that's the, what is it called? The National Reconnaissance Office. The guys who, you know, have put the satellites up there and NASA, of course, because NASA is involved in putting satellites up there, right? Yeah. Um, so all of these agencies are involved in doing something that is absolutely grotesque. Major, major human rights violations, total takeover of human brains and human bodies. So I, my own feeling, Paul, is that the fact that we speak about this openly on this show um, must surely 
have ripple effect, you know, must surely have ripples out there in the world of awareness and consciousness, in people's awareness, you know, whoever is listening and whoever is watching. And I know that many of the people watching these shows and coming into our chat rooms also are victims, right? And many of them are V2K victims. So that's almost like one step beyond being a due victim, you know? Yeah. So... I'm hoping, my no, hope I'm, is that, you know, there, there's something is happening behind the scenes. People are being changed and affected and things will change, you know. You know, while I was listening to his interview, a really strange thought uh, came to me. And I, I wanted to maybe talk about it a little bit. Uh, I think that a lot of the perpetrators are targets. I think that there's a, there's a thin line between perps and targets. I would say that Randy Webster has very little of his original mind left. I think he's he's probably her clone, so he has, has got her patterns in his brain. And I don't think he's a free will agent. I, I really just don't think he is. Uh, he was recruited as a psychopath out of high school and given this uh, torture training. When you go through the SRE training, you actually submit to torture. And they say that really changes people when, you, when you've been uh, in torture. Now, now, here's the strange thing. And uh, uh, should we be interviewing perps? Now, I know the reason this occurred to me is because uh, Chris knows his perps. They talk to him in his head, and then he has conversations with them. We know Randy Webster. And we know, should we be, is this too strange to get a picture of what's going on here? Have a perp come in, one of his perps maybe, um, and talk about whether they'd want to be interviewed, whether they, whether they, what, you know, you know, you know where I'm going here. I, well, I don't know yes, where to lead. I, I think I do know where you're going, Paul. And I have to say, because you know, I've spoken to a few people who've told me about synthetic telepathy that they constantly get, and also V2K that they get. In the course of conversation with them, um, often, actually, initially, without me even initiating it, I ended up hearing a lot from the synthetic telepathy the or perp. the V2K from the perps okay so i ended up hearing a lot of information that was directed at me stuff about me to start with literally you know i become a character in their little world and they start talking about me so right. information you know their their impressions of me their thoughts about me that kind of thing and uh, so it's very, and I, ha I have to say, because of course I'm a writer and a journalist, and I am exploring all of these subjects because to me, it's um, not merely important from a human rights point of view, but it's also important from a writing and recording point of view to, you know, record what's going on. So I've always um, been interested in that way, not not to engage directly, not with the intention of deliberately engaging, but more with the with the intention of trying to figure out what's going on and what exactly is happening yeah. here. You know, what kind of pipeline is being established and are these guys trying to actually convey something to the world through me, you know, by actually addressing me through their victim, you know, that kind of thing. So I've engaged, so in other words, I've been privy to a few conversations like that. And it's happened um almost um some, you know, spontaneously without, without intention or without initiation. So I was going to suggest actually next week, I'm hoping that my print interview will be published and two podcasts that I have already done that recorded with, um, with Chris will be released by then. I'm just sort of putting the fine touches on those and I will have them out shortly in the next few days. So maybe what would be great is if Chris could come on, you know, and talk to us. And if you wanted to kind of explore that with him, that aspect with him, I'm sure he might be up for it, you know, he might express. In the interest of finding out more of what's going on, really, you know. Yeah, is, uh, are we, is it a battle of good against evil? And are these really rotten, corrupted, uh, people. Um, huh. Well, I can tell you, as far as Chris I, is I, concerned, 
it's just we're looking at half the picture here yes of course and, and you know uh, i think we all know that all human beings have the capacity for good and evil but if you look at somebody who's for instance in the case of chris burton who is a voice to skull victim who is being tortured 24 7 okay for for you know however many years beyond 10 years at this point so he has he's comes out and he says, these guys are professional torturers. And this is what they tell him. They tell him, we're here to torture you. You know? And they're being paid. Now, remember, these guys are being paid. Somebody is paying them big bucks to do this. This is the creation of a living Manchurian candidate, you know? Which is why Chris's case is extraordinary. And the case of every V2K victim is extraordinary you know, and must be known more about by all of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they tell him that they're professional torturers. Well, yeah, that's great. Well, how do you get into that profession? I mean, you talk to your high school guidance. I mean, it's just <laughs> like a strange, uh, it's strange. Well, I've decided to become a professional torturer. And I do that on, on, on the side. But uh, this weekend, I couldn't do it because I had to take my, my daughter to Sunday. You know, it's just... <laughs> It doesn't Hobbies, fit into my friend. strangling of, neighborhood uh, cats. Yeah, that's how you get on. Yeah, is that what they do on the weekends? I mean, are these yeah. and are these real people? I, I I'd be interested in. Uh, oh yes, so and that's the other aspect. They are most definitely real people, and in fact, again through Chris's story, because I'm learning so much from Chris's story, he actually has run into people whom he has come to understand are part of the little mind hive that's sitting around in his head, you know, directing voices into his head. He's actually run into a couple of them, definitely one of them. So, and, you know, and I know he can tell the story much, much better than I, so I'm, you know, eager that he come on next week. Right. I, I just, I just thought I'd throw that out because we are hearing, I think we've uh, presented so much evidence. If you've watched any of these things, uh, these two hour presentations from beginning to end, you've got to really think that something's going on here. And these people that are coming forward, I, I, people, I mean, that's why we assembled this team is to get four incredibly competent. I mean, if you listen to uh, Karen Stewart is the example. I mean, if you listen to her for 10 minutes, you know, she's credible, you know, she's not crazy. Um, I mean, you just, she's just the type of person that you would trust with anything. And so we are getting this side, and I think we've made a case that uh, there, there are people being tortured by the government agencies, the deep state. I don't know whether it extends across the world or is mostly in the Five Eye countries. Uh, that, that's something we need to run down to. But how? It seems to extend across the world, Paul. It seems to extend across the world. Um, yes, and I think on and off we've gone into trying to delve into who exactly is doing it and why and so forth. It seems to be a globalist phenomenon, really, and I use that word politically, globalist. So it seems to be connected to the NWO. So I had those, I had those questions, too, and then I received uh, messages from people in India and Zimbabwe who were also getting hit. And I said, there's nowhere to go that this yes. isn't present, you yeah. know? Thailand, Cambodia, Russia, Brazil, yeah. Australia, down here. New Zealand, down here. everywhere. Indonesia. I'm just remembering yes. names of people from different places who've, you yes. know, whom I've connected with. I wonder That's if, incredible. I wonder if the, uh, you know, we talked at the beginning about uh, Russia. Um, or, or someplace like Hungary. Hungary seems to be standing up against the EU's uh, immigration laws and things. I wonder if they're, I wonder how, I don't know, you know, it seems like somebody couldn't even exist uh, if they uh, posed, a, posed a threat to the deep state. Yes, and I... Yes, and I think even Poland, for instance, you know, the Polish defense minister came out, I think it was last spring, he came out and he actually acknowledged somebody's question at a press conference. And he said that, yes, there are people coming up now with reports of being hit with electromagnetic radiation, and we are going to look into that. 
So this was like one of the most public things that a public figure could have stated in Europe. You know, it was a, it made a big splash when he came out and he said that. But um, unfortunately, I think it still continues. Now, the, the Pol many people in Poland are very vocal about it, much more than over here. There have been like large protests. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of open activism about this, about people being hit with neural weapons and electromagnetic weapons. Um, it seems to me that all of these countries, you know, Paul, I think it's a little bit like the whole depopulation scenario. Now, if you read Kevin Galilei's work or if you've talk, talked with him, you know, which I have, I've interviewed him at one point, he's a UN scholar. He's a scholar of uh, the UN work. And he's figured out that, well, he's gone back in time and actually looked at the documentation and so forth. So when the UN was started way back, and all through the last few decades, they have struck, pretty much they've st struck deals with everybody who is a part of the UN uh, to slowly engage in these kind of depopulation policies insidiously over time, you see? And I, I, it seems to me that the, this, the use of electromagnetic weapons and neuro weapons is, is, is part of that, is part of an either spoken, a tacit or an uh, you know, unspoken or spoken agreement with all of the countries of the UN. I think that's true. I think that's true. To run I, this kind of it's program. Just not, it's just how did they, uh, it seems like there's a depopulation effort. I, they're they're uh, terraforming the planet with chemtrails and uh, mm -hmm. killing people with uh, GMOs and things like that. But how do they get a perp involved in helping with their depopulation effort? I mean, unless they're not part of the population to begin with. Well, I, mean, I would... That's a good question, and I'd like to ask, well, who on earth actually signs up to join the clandestine services of the DIA or the CIA? Who does that, you know? Right. So I think people, there are people out there who, um, who enter this world of black ops through the intelligence services, and then, you know, they get trained in various areas, and, that they, get, and, the, and they get inculcated into it. And um, isn't it true that whoever joins the CIA never can break free of the CIA? You know, they're always in your business. They're always in your life. Oh, I, well, that's did, I, I didn't awesome. hear you. Did you? Yeah, I think when you join these agencies, it's not just you, it's your family. I mean, you're, you're kind of, uh, you've opened yourself up to be uh, kind of puppeted by them. I mean, if you go back to uh, the Laurel Canyon stories by David uh, McGowan, he talks about mm -hmm. the di different artists who were part of the hippie movement, um, uh, uh, the Grateful Dead. They were three CIA agents before they learned to play their instruments. Uh, you have, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Riders on the Storm. Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison. Oh, He's right. the son of uh, Admiral, what I think his name was George Morrison, the guy that uh, perpetrated the hoax of uh, um, Gulf of the Gulf of Tonkin. I'm, I'm not recalling stuff right now. But all of that, uh, uh, their name's like Carly Simon, the one that uh, plays the guitar. Uh, James Taylor? No, not James <laughs> Taylor. But anyway, one after the other, they were all sons and daughters. They were related to even Frank Zappa's father was uh, in that. So it seems like when you uh, commit to going into uh, uh, an intelligence or you're high up in government, they own you, it seems. Mm -hmm. And so your children, your children's children, all those people are subject to being co-opted mm -hmm. into this program. And, you know, Paul, I think at this point as well, it, it, it may be important to mention that we're also talking about, you know, the Illuminati. We're talking about Satanists. We're talking about large portions of the population who've been subsumed into these intelligence agencies. We are talking about actual Nazis. We're talking about Project Paperclip Nazis. These guys don't think twice about experimenting on humans. I mean, the entire V2K program is an, it sounds to me from in every aspect like a Nazi and Mengele style program. Because it is, Absolutely, total, it is total torture. It is total takeover. There is no regard for human life or human values or human anything. It's absolutely anti-human. So exactly. what are they? <laughs> so it's, it's just... So that's the piece they're, that we're missing right now. 
Yeah. Yes. They're devolved. They are devolved into bipedal sociopath predators. And that's, they look human. That's excellent. <laughs> but they're not, you know. You know, they yeah. want, I mean, look at a sociopath. A sociopath early on in his or her life basically is reprimanded for certain things. Right. And I mentioned strangling cats. I'm, I wasn't being really funny, but there was an incident in, uh, in Arizona when I lived in Tucson on an Air Force base where a lot of the people in the Air Force base had outdoor cats. It was lovely weather and people trusted each other. Um, well, there was a spate of cat strangulations that went on one summer to the horror of so many people. It was found to be two teenage boys. They would say, here, kitty, kitty, cat would come up to be um, petted, and they would strangle it and throw it in the bushes. Well, these are probably who these people are looking for. Oh, you did that? Well, we want you mm -hmm. because you're not human. You're and born without there, a soul. Yeah. Wasn't there an article recently in Newsweek about murderers and pedophiles being picked up by, by some major agency? Was it the DOD? I know oh, you've spoken yes. about the and, NSA also. And given, and given security clearances. Yes, people are well, being given security clearances by the Pentagon. And, um, and I know, Karen, that you have talked about in NSC security, but finding out from NSC security, people who worked in NSC security, that the, uh, the basic regulations had been cut back so that suspended. anybody could totally suspended so anybody could send in their resume and you know with major convictions on your resume criminal record killing people on your record and you'd be pulled into the nsa without well, it's specific yeah it specifically was nsa security and that happened yeah. after general michael hayden yeah. took over mm -hmm. and a friend of mine was working in hr human resources and part of her job was to look at the resumes and toss out the ones that were absolutely outrageous and she told me later she had to leave hr because she was approached by nsa security and told we want all the resumes don't throw out anybody for any reason we don't care if they're pedophiles or pet murderers or murderers we want to see their resume Right. And she was horrified because if you had, if you jaywalked, you were, uh, you know, uh, examined and said, well, are you sure you're not going to jaywalk again? You know, I mean, that's, that's the attitude when I came in in 1982, but by the time Hayden came in and things changed, they were seeking out psychos for NSA security. Which is hugely revealing, you know, which kind of tells oh, you yeah. what exactly has happened to this government. It's simply gone downhill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, well, it, I don't think it's I don't think it's happened on its own. I think it's a, it's an orchestrated plan. Somebody in the chat room brought up the Milgram experiment, and then there's the prison thing that was done in Yale, and they're using that to say that human beings are uh, pliable, malleable. Are will do anything they're told. But I, I would I would have to mention that the Milgram study was done. I think it was done at Stanford, but it was done by a Yale alumni. Uh, mm -hmm. The prison where they do the prison guards, that was done in Yale. And I would say, if you're looking for a psychopath uh, hive, go to the Ivy League schools. Oh, yeah. That's where the psychopaths send their kids. So if you're going to do an experiment to find out about how people act, and you're going to use a population that's not 1% to 4% psychopath, that's probably 20 to 30% psychopath or more, Mm -hmm. We'll do it in these schools, and this is going to show human beings as being uh, easily corruptible, uh, able to fall victim and, and become a, a parapsychopath at an instant. I, I don't think you can point to the studies anymore with any confidence because they're not, going to use, they're not using a population that I think would be typical of, of, of human population. That's, that's my, my opinion. Mm -hmm. So... Well, uh, you know, in, in are, the... Are we talking about... No. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut I'm, off what I'm you were sorry, saying. I'm sorry, Jermola. I was, I was gonna, just going to say that in those Ivy League schools, you know, you've got the so-called elite 
right? You've got very wealthy kids going to these Ivy League schools because the tuition in these schools is nothing to sneeze at. So you've got very wealthy kids going to these schools and then joining these fraternities or whatever and uh, lying in coffins and so forth and thinking they're doing something very great. Um, you know, the skull and bones guys at Yale, Yale and so forth. And then they all get out of these Ivy League schools and where do they go? They go join the CIA right? They join um, all of these, um, they, they get into the dark ops business, right? right. And, so if and you're a CIA, and you, if, you're a, if you're a psychopath, I could take the Bush family, I could take any of the Carey family, I mean, any of these psychopaths, and you have a normal child, well, you don't want them to be normal, you want them to be a psychopath. So they do things with their children that we wouldn't even think of doing with our children. So they grow up and they go to Ivy League schools to go to the best schools. I had a friend that went to Dartmouth. And, uh, he got a scholarship, he's an incredibly bright guy. He got a scholarship, he lived close and you know. But he said that there were two, there were two uh, separate um, uh, uh, students, student bodies. There was a student body that were people that belonged there, the elites. And then there were the people that got these scholarships because they were a minority or they were, you know. That's a good distinction, or, actually. Well, I think the point that they, whoever did that, I, I think it was really great that you brought it up. Thank you very much. But the more I look into, uh, it seems to me this, this, this group of people that we're, we're calling psychopaths, um, are really different and if you're using psychopaths to find out about human beings you're you're not going to get a really uh, an accurate picture uh, well so, you know anyway. what i wanted to say also what i wanted to say also is that you've got this group of so-called elites who you know this is the other thing they think they are the creme de la creme and they tell each other this they believe this they tell their kids this and this is how they get along. You know, this is this is how they promulgate the entire species. And meanwhile, you have tons of money right now going into the DOD and going into the surveillance industry. And it's that's it's able to pick anybody off the streets with money. So you see, this is the other end of yeah. it. Yeah. And they've created an economy. You've got where, where we're all yes. exactly. Yeah. Well, it there's basically our economies so. have, have all crashed. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Well, I'm just saying they're all basically telling the people, if you're not predator, you're prey. Choose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people are doing this for money. So you see these professional torturers that are sitting around inside the mind hives and in the heads of voice to skull victims, for instance, are happy to take that, that bag of money and work for these MKUltra programs for military intelligence and for central intelligence, you know, the CIA and DIA. These are dastardly organizations, these are dastardly programs, and they should be struck down to the ground. And I would say, remind people that the senators and congressmen whose jobs it, it was to have oversight are derelict and have been for decades. Absolutely, exactly. at the very least, you know, dereliction of duty and, and complete contradiction of why they're there in the first place. They're supposed to be representing the people. They're not representing the, the people by a long yeah. shot. No. Yeah. Well, look at how difficult it is to actually get in touch with them. Do they have emails? No, they don't. Oh, exactly. You know? It's very difficult to get in touch with them. It's well, all so about contacting staff people and then trying hard to get an appointment and so forth. And then you never get to actually chat with them because I've tried as well to talk to Congress people and I end up chatting with the staff. Well, and look at you, you call the White House uh, phone line and then you try to leave a message and they tell you, oh, we don't leave messages for anybody. OK, well, why are you there? You just tell us what your concerns are and what will you do with them? Uh, you know, a hundred thousand have people answer. have got to sign a petition, and then maybe the White House will poke its snub, you know, its nose out and say something pointless. Well, you know, yeah, the the hundred thousand. I recently had that petition on the White House, and it is now expired. But it still is on I petition. If people uh, have decided they really don't like this, then maybe go to I petition and sign. You know, but um, for.
for the White House petition, it actually said that all we needed were 2,000 uh, signatures to evoke a response from the White House. Now, it wasn't oh. going to be the same response as for 100,000 people, but we didn't even get that. And we had pe people just basically um, complaining about, oh, I didn't like this about the petition. I didn't like that. A and I think, you know, I'm going to sign almost any petition that comes across my uh my vision here because I want one of them to succeed and get notification and not have somebody complain that, Oh, I don't, this is a run on sentence. I'm not signing this petition, you know, mm -hmm. or, or this should have been a semicolon, not a colon, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's just, do you really like what's being done to you? Because is there the perfect petition? No, there's not. So please yes, support little... anybody, everybody who makes an effort, please, unless it's just stupid, you know, um, please do support people's efforts, you know, and mm -hmm. quit, quit arguing among ourselves for Pete's sake, you know? Yes, I absolutely agree. I, I don't really know to what extent these petitions really help, but you know, to the extent that each one of us is making an effort, um, if somebody makes an effort and puts a petition out there, you know, it's, it's helpful for everyone else to jump in and support it. Um, well, it's a paper trail too. And yes, it is the paper trail, and I'm all for that. You know, record everything. We're creating records. And, you know, for instance, Catherine's tsunami email campaign was all about informing people, informing governments. At this point, I don't think there are very few governments left that, that can say that they don't know or haven't heard of this. So. I read an article a while back saying that there was a gang stalking problem in Iceland. For Pete's sake, you know. It's amazing. It's truly yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, somebody in the chat said it's all over except the Antarctica. There's no... <laughs> and those, those penguins there's look no... suspect to me. <laughs> They're always <laughs> pulling each other around. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's just uh, fascinating that there are people jumping on board for this... Uh, psychopathic program that I, I'm, you know, what they've told us, they, what they, where they want to go with this. I, I can't, uh, I, I, I just, there's so many holes in it. I can't follow it anymore. You know, they want to connect everybody into a hive mind directed by AI. And that's a stretch for me because first of all, AI AI will take over and run everything. I mean, do the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers really want to turn over all their wealth and everything to an AI that, that can control them? So, so I'm not sure that AI just isn't a fiction or, or some, kind of a, some kind of a scare tactic that, that we've got in there. And then, well, it, yeah, entirely possible. Um, because I think, you know, you, you can look around and you can see certain elements, definitely, of the organized talking program that appears to be run on AI. But that could be the application of AI to a specific program, you know. So we don't really know to what extent AI has indeed been deployed. You know, you get no, and also, I, th I would question artificial nature of it. Why does it have to oh, be? Oh yes. Why does it have to be artificial? Why can't it be a separate intelligence that seems to be pushing in a certain direction um, for for some oh, reason? Oh, I doubt. Oh, I doubt that it's actually pushing on its own in a, in a separate direction or anything of the sort. I think the technocrats who come out every now and then and say, oh, we've got to watch out for AI. I think they're just pulling the wool over everyone else's eyes, just as usual. Because, you know, they've got AI under control. What is AI, really? It's, it's AI with human inputs. They're programming it. It's all about algorithms and programming. Right. So... So it's, it's interesting to try to wade through the misinformation that they've given us and try to find out what they're, what they're, what they're doing here. Um, if, the, if, if, the, if the aim is to destroy the human race and, uh, and that's their, well, then what are, they, what are they doing with gang stalking? Why don't they, why don't they uh, just go ahead and do it? What's, what's, all, the, what's all the preliminary... Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe they're learning something from us. Well, it seems to me the whole gang stalking, organized stalking scenario is very connected with control. It's it's connected to totalitarian control. It's just like the Stasi. It's just like the Zerzit song of the East Germans. 
you know it's total takeover of of human societies human communities of, of forcing people to to become docile compliant and recognize authority so you see those fbi and fdle that you saw waltzing about in your neighborhood karen are, are equivalent to the um Massachusetts Fusion Center guys and um, probably the Quincy police who've been waltzing in and out of my neighborhood. And in my neighborhood also, I've actually seen collusion with the National Grid guys. So I've seen National Grid guys pull up in front of my neighbor's house and these guys go in and sit in the neighbor's um, front living room for a long period of time. What are they doing in there? You know, and I've also seen people spending the night over there in their house. You know, so I've seen pretty much the same kind of thing you've seen. And in fact, yesterday afternoon, I was sitting out, or, or, or maybe two days before, I was sitting out on the porch in the afternoon with my laptop, enjoying a little bit of sunshine, you know, as the sun was going down across the street. And, um, you know, the cars started zooming back and forth as they usually do, because they're trying hard to to point and hit as, as usual. And I had my camera, so I recorded as much of it as I could. And I saw a couple cars pull up, one to a neighbor on my right and one up the hill on my left. And somebody get out, a young person with a backpack, with a big backpack, get out and in each case go into the house. And after a while, I started to feel intense hits on my face. I held up my shield. And sure enough, those hits were coming from those two houses. Mm -hmm. Well, they love transferring the devices and ba battery packs with backpacks. You know, I mean, you can notice the, the pattern. The pattern is people are... are heavy laden with backpacks and they're going back and forth in the same direction. Uh, they're older people who have no business wearing a backpack and they go from one house to another house. Why are they wearing a backpack? Or somebody who's going out for a walk, walks three houses down, meets somebody who, who doesn't belong to that house in the driveway, exchanges packages and then walks back to their house. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of patterns that tell you that this is exactly what's going on. They're exchanging old devices for the new, mm -hmm. for the new device that's going to hit you with a slightly different uh, electromagnetic wave of some kind. Um, but that's what they're doing. They're being so, oh, so clever, you know, and using teenagers with backpacks going back and oh, forth. Yes. And I'm not, and I'm not saying going to school. There's a difference. Oh, you know, they're actually the teenager... using school going kids as well. Well, you yes, know? they are. They are. But I'm saying, you know, don't confuse it with the children going to, to school with backpacks. That's not yeah. what I'm saying. What I'm saying is why is a 13-year-old at 8 o'clock at night carrying a huge uh, backpack from one townhouse to another house? Why is somebody mm -hmm. on a bicycle heavy laden with a backpack? Why don't they get in a car and go there? Why? Because cars have tags that you can record. So they're using all kinds of messengers and people like that who paid 50 bucks or 100 bucks to take this backpack across town or uh, across the neighborhood and uh, distribute new, uh, new devices or battery packs for what's already been used up. So it's very clear. Mm -hmm. And this is absolutely very clear. Yeah, these are supposedly the covert ops, the so-called plausible mm -hmm. deniability ops. But you're right. It's very clear. You just have to spend a little time observing what is going on. And every one of us can pick up these anomalies, you know, this yeah. normal, not normal human behavior. And what I told the police and the sheriff's department, I said, I'm looking at patterns of behavior. I'm not looking at the same person necessarily twice, though, yes, in the neighborhood, people who live there. Yes, it's a pattern of their behavior, too. But there are patterns engaged in by people who are engaging it in a, in a sense of relay, you know, like somebody's following you in a relay fashion, you know, so uh, you've got five cars around you and the one to your right is going to go with you if you turn right. And the one on your left is going to go with you if you turn left and you have one or two, uh, one ahead and maybe one behind that'll follow you if you go straight. So it's patterns of behavior, not the people necessarily, it, but there are various people engaging in those daily undeniable patterns. Mm -hmm. and, but they and don't I, seem to pick up on that. Yeah. Well, they are, they are deliberately choosing not to pay yeah. attention, right? Yeah. Well, because a lot of them are complicit, but uh, yeah. I think there are a few who just are too dull to actually make sense of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's astonishing also is, you know, children are being used. 
So my daughter is in seventh grade currently, you know, and I go to pick her up. It's from school and I see all these little kids coming over and uh, there is no reason for these um, young uh, seventh grade, eighth grade boys to be, um, you know, dashing about looking at me as I'm sitting in my car, pointing their little cell phones at me, standing, you know, literally dancing in front of me, posturing and standing in front of me in front of my car and doing little dances, pointing their cell phones, yelling and shouting, engaging in street theater, replaying words that I have said, replaying phrases that I have used, color coded, wearing the usual color codes, you know, based on clothing that my daughter and I wear and so forth. There's no reason for it. it it's all part of the scenario and it's, it, it's horrifying. It's horrifying that children are being pulled into it. Well, I'm sure, well, I, I'm sure you talk to them. Have you, have you gone out and talked to those kids that are... I, 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 um, I mean, in this particular case, not really, because it's usually a, a bunch of boys who do this. Sometimes it's girls as well. Um, you know, because I'm just sort of sitting there waiting for my daughter. I'm looking at my cell phone or reading a book or something, and I'm waiting inside my car, waiting in line for my daughter to cross the street from her school and come over. Um, and um, you have these kids also going to, to jump into the parents' cars, walking down. So it's, uh, but they're doing this as well. So now I've, I've tried to engage some of the stalkers, especially in Tallahassee. Um, and I'll go sit down or, or, or stand near them and, and approach them in a third person way. I'll say, well, what do you think about the gang stalking problem going on here? And, you know, and they'll just kind of be a little bit shocked and I'm not accusing them. I'm not saying you are this. I'm saying, what do you think about this going on around the United States and various you know, cities and states, et cetera, et cetera. And I've only gotten sociopathic reactions. I've not, I, I, one time I think I got a reaction where the woman was, oh my gosh, you know, and she realized she was being played for a fool because she was outside basically watching me um, in her car. So that was the only human response that I got. But the other responses I got were very sociopathic. One, one uh, young man said, uh, I think whistleblowers should be killed. And another one said, um, do you think this is the only town that gang stalks? Oh my. And then, of course, the, fa the, the, the now famous guy who was uh, reporting me via text, oh, she's in this grocery store. And I approached him and said, so how much money do you get for reporting people? And he's the one who kind of smiled, realizing he had been caught. And he said $100. And we had wow. maybe a three three minute conversation. And I said, well, do the people who are being told that they're reporting a bad person, do they realize that's not a bad person? They're being lied to. And he thought about it for a split second and said, it's money. Nobody cares. Yes. I remember so, you've told me this before. Yeah. It's so it's sociopathic. Yeah. Sociopathic. It's money. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I have to say, you know, I've talked to people who are in the Kumon lobby because sometimes I go and sit in the lobby as I'm waiting for my daughter to finish her, her little after school Kumon math thing. And there are all these other parents, right? And I've handed out flyers to them, community notices, uh, especially the one that says, do you know you're being lied to by Homeland Security? And which really spells out the whole program about how DHS is going around uh, slandering and defaming certain people who are being known as DIs, you know, to everybody around. Um, the target is slandered and defamed. And uh, all sorts of stories are sent around regarding this person being someone to watch. And therefore, these people have to be involved, etc. So that's what the flyer is all about. Uh, and it's, it, it literally just talks about the stick down program. So I've handed this out and I've had varied responses to that. People are usually a little bit taken aback when they get the flyer. Uh, they kind of look at me in shock that I'm handing out something to them because I'm supposed to be somebody, you know, outside the margins of society or, some, or something. I don't know. But in any case, they take, the, um, they, they take the flyer, they read it. They look very grim. They put it down and then they go right back to tracking me. So if they're unable to get a lock on me, they come right up next to me to get their little triangulation going and so forth. They don't stop. They don't miss a beat. They're back to their jobs. You know, it defies logic, but they must be resorting to, well, this must be a lie, because if this is true, then I'm a bad person. And I know I'm not a bad person, so this must be a lie. 
It must be something like that because you know, Karen, these people go around with a positive smirk on their faces. I have no idea what kind of story they, they're being told, but somebody is padding them up big time. Somebody is giving them to understand that they're very special to yes. be tracking <laughs> other people, to be stalking Playing their little people. egos. Yes. Yes. There's something, some kind of mass psychology being used on them. And they fall flat for it. And, you know, they're, they're totally taken in. They're totally and absolutely taken in. They believe the nonsense. Yes. Well, I will give you the, the example of KGB agents who would be sent out from the USSR into Europe, into the United States, Canada, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, growing up in the USSR, they were telling everybody there, oh, the Americans and everybody else, they always have grocery sh shortages, just like we do. Don't believe this garbage of having food on the, on the um, you know, uh, overwhelming food availability in grocery stores. That's baloney. That's just propaganda. So when the KGB agents went out into the world and they saw that it was not baloney, why did they not defect? Okay. Mm. Well, one of them, one of them in an interview who did finally defect was, and this is uh, from NSA historical uh, stories that they tell, you know, NSA people. So it's not really, it's not secure at all. I mean, it's not uh, classified, but one of the agents said, well, it took me a long time to decide to defect because I realized that what we were told was a lie and that the West was prosperous and that we were not. He said, mm -hmm. but I was special in my country. <laughs> Nobody else had what I had. I was special. And if I came out and lived in the West, then I was just like everybody else. I wasn't special. That's it, so, I think. That's a very, very telling story. That's it, exactly. I think people feel anointed, you know, mm -hmm. when the FBI comes over and talks to them or the local fusion center, the police come and talk to them and say, can you help us? We are taking part in, we are doing an investigation on this person in your neighborhood. Can you help us track this person? We need to keep her under close surveillance. She has terrorist affiliations. She's a dissident. She's speaking out against the U.S. government. And we need to watch her every second with our little cell phones. And, you know... There's all this nonsense about countering violent extremism, Citizen Watch, Neighborhood Watch, all these bogus programs, post 9-11, post Patriot Act. Yes. And, and these people are actually given to understand that they are helping the country by doing this. This is patriotism. They're appealing to your finer sense of loyalty to your nation, to the flag, to the American flag. Now, don't mind that we are a bunch of mafia, Masonic, Satanist criminals doing this. Pedophiles. Don't, <laughs> pedophiles. Don't look into our background too closely. You're going to find pedophilia, child abuse, child trafficking, drug trafficking, etc., etc. Just look at our badge. Just get hypnotized by the badge. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And you're special. You're special. I mean, oh, no, they're not. They're a special idiot. They're a special brand of idiots to know that, that they're being told that it's patriotic to trample the rights of their neighbor to ignore the Constitution, ignore the law, ignore mm -hmm. the fact that the police or the FBI come to you and they tell you stupid stories like, well, you know, we think the person next door to you is a this or a that, but we don't actually have proof. And, uh, but we really want to go after them anyway without proof. We need you to, you, a civilian, untrained in the law, we need you to stalk and harass them or point devices at them, and we're not going to tell you what they are. Oh, don't worry, uh, they're non-lethal or something of that nature. Or they are lethal, but it's, it's, it's legal to kill them, you know. Mm -hmm. So these people are a special kind of stupid, mm -hmm. special kind of greedy. Yes, and it's various stories, Karen, as you know from Sherry's case, for instance. She's actually, well, I hope at some point she actually records conversations, but, you know, she has certainly reported that people around her have been saying things like, it's just trauma-based mind control. It's a military program. It's for her health. They're doing this for her health. They are pointing, they are sending huge amounts of radiation to illegal implants. 
implanted in her body, causing pain, trauma, and torture, all for her health. This is part of neuro modification, behavior modification, and it's part of a health program being run as a community intervention. And is that not a special kind of stupid to believe one bit of that? Yes, absolutely. It, it just blows the mind. It just, it's so shocking. Is this what, how, how dumbed down Americans are that they would fall yes. for this? Yeah, I think, just, no, I, it think is. They are, I think they are that dumb. Uh, that's why I think it would be really great to have them, uh, if you are on occasion to talk to them, turn on your, uh, your cell phone and try to get some kind of information from them as to why they're doing it. Because maybe if their program is great, maybe we need to comply with whatever they're doing. Maybe we should go and... <laughs> You know, I, if they think that's if, if they can, if they're believing that, then. Um, but but I, I think you, I think you're absolutely right. They, they have been tricked into uh, working the program. But I, I'd really like to know what kind of tricks, what kind of mind control they're under, because they're definitely under mind control. And another thing that occurred to me while you were talking was this mass psychology doesn't work on everybody. Apparently it doesn't work on you, you two. And um, <laughs> I would so hope that, not. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if I were uh, one of the controllers, I'd want to know everything about you because we've got these programs, they're sophisticated, we've been working on them for a hundred years. Uh, we're doing everything we can. We have the most powerful mind control device ever known to man called the television set. And <laughs> they still, we still can't get them. So it just, you guys are very special, apparently. <laughs> We're not the special they like. <laughs> You're not the right special, exactly. That's right. Wow. That's right. We no, have functioning pineal think... glands. Oh, yes, right. exactly. Yeah, we have functioning glands of every kind, including functioning brains, which is partially why they want desperately to come and degrade our brains. I mean, look at what it's come to. They literally want to degrade the brains of people who are thinking critically, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Oh, yeah. Who are opposed to their uh, depopulation agenda. Well, look mm -hmm. at what Can't they're imagine. saying. They're saying you need to be brain damaged so that you can be part of us. Yeah. Actually, there was something on the social justice frame on that. They were uh, uh, decrying people who uh, were high intelligence because they have a privilege that they didn't earn. Oh, so my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's but the funniest even, thing I ever heard. I mean, I wish I could say that that's not what they were pushing, but the, the social justice side thinks that if you're bright, you should be ashamed of that because it's not right. <laughs> oh, wow. This is, oh, you boy. Know, I recommend the, that they all read the story Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut. Really uh -huh. hysterical story. You might know it. Yeah. So it looks forward to a dystopian time in the future, which actually is the time that we are currently living in, where anybody who stands out, anyone who has a talent, like a ballet dancer or a public speaker, somebody with a lovely voice, uh, somebody who can think on their two feet, uh, is forced to wear handicaps, physical handicaps, to burden yeah. them, to bring them down to the level of the other, you know, total yeah. dense, dumb, docile, compliant populace. So it's a really, it, it yeah. really illustrates that's what they're what exactly for. going on. Right? Yeah, that's exactly what they're, that's that. exactly where they're heading. Mm -hmm. I've sure. seen so that claim that's, uh, yeah, yeah, I've ahead, seen that Karen. claim that it's unfair. I, I said, I've seen that in months before. I've seen that claim that, you know, uh, higher than average intelligence people or gifted people in any way, they have privilege in it, and that's just not right. That's just <laughs> unbelievably ridiculous, you know. And I couldn't, I read it several times to say, is this satire? But it wasn't. <laughs> right. You know? So. Right. 
Yes, well, everything's been whole, done that's upside scary. down, as we know, you know, in this world. Everything has been turned upside down. This We're living through the most insane times. And actually, it comes back to that issue of, you know, calling them psychopaths is one thing. I kind of, uh, I know Catherine loves the term, and I know, Paul, you do too. But I try yeah, hard not right. to call them psychopaths all the time. Only because I think that, you know, any label could begin to excuse their infamy. And I don't want to excuse their infamy in any way whatsoever. Right. <laughs> I want to paint it for the world to see. So, um, I, who, literally, it's a bunch of idiots sitting around deciding to take control. And, you know, this goes back to wealth, power, and generational wealth and power acquired through criminal means, right, yes. across time. <laughs> right. So those are the guys who have the wealth, the power. It's a bunch of mafia thugs. They just, yeah. I mean, you know, there's lots of words to call them, I suppose. But um, this is what they're doing. They are, they are trying to suppress everybody else and keep the world for themselves and uh, run this whole master-slave scenario now on the entire world population. Right. It's obvious that they don't... Well, I, well, I don't Go ahead. So Go ahead. obviously they don't care about humans. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now I'm going to call them rabid bipedals, I think. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> rabid yeah, about They need to be put stuff. down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you have a rabid dog, it's going to not only harm everything around it, but it's going to harm itself. So that's what these people are doing. This program is an extinction level event because you cannot sustain this without so totally damaging uh, humanity that it will cease to exist. I mean, look at the Russian, uh, Russian President Putin admitted that years ago, uh, maybe decades ago, that the Soviet Union tried using V2K to speak to its own agents in the field because they didn't want them detected. And they stopped because they realized they were giving their agents brain damage. And I sat there thinking, isn't that interesting that the Soviet Union cared more about its people than the United States does? That's actually huge. So that information is out there then, that um, Putin has actually confessed to using V2K on his soldiers? Yes, yeah. uh, on the agents, on the agents. On that agents. were sent out, yeah, sent out into the West to be spies, you know. They were using V2K, but stopped. Interesting. Yes, I think there is a difference because, as you know, the Russians did all of that research first before the, the West. And then, you know, I think the CIA picked it up and, you know, got up to speed very quickly. And I think has probably surpassed the Russians at this point in terms of the horrors of the tech that they have investigated, explored and have at their command now and that they're using, that they're operating. Um, so I think Russia was, uh, you know, a little bit earlier to that game and... Um, perhaps has come to certain different conclusions about the use of electromagnetic radiation on humans. However, the use of electronic weapons, as they are called these days, they're really electromagnetic weapons, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, sonic and scalar weapons, probably, um, has not been eschewed by any country in the world. I mean, electronic warfare, I think they have all named it as the new revolution in military affairs. This is 21st century warfare, electronic weapons. And I did watch an interview with, well, it wasn't an interview. It was a, uh, somebody was filming a meeting in which Putin and uh, the, his other dignitaries were across the table from Americans. And they were translating. So if you find it on YouTube, there will be uh, uh, subtitles for you. But he was very stern, but I'd never seen him like this before. But he was, he was very stern, but he was pleading at the same time. Okay, what he was saying is that China, Russia, and the United States all have nuclear parity. Nobody wants to use these devices because they don't want to destroy the world, and they know that they will be destroyed as they destroy other people. So we're at parity. We're good. But the United States is pushing the directed energy weapons, forcing us to be in a mm. new arms race with them, that we don't want to be in. That's very so, interesting. Yeah, it was really a shock, but you could see on his face, he was not acting. It was not dramatic. He was not trying trickery. He was 
keeping his capacity as the leader of, you know, of Russia and a mighty power. But he was saying, we don't want to do this. Stop. Yes, that's kind of what I have picked up elsewhere as well, that the, the Russians have a different approach. They don't necessarily want to destroy human populations with directed energy weapons. I, ho I hope that's true, because if that's the case, then it would mean that there is a large power out there, you know, who is aware of the horrors of this and can perhaps step in and advocate and make some headway in um, stopping these awful programs. Yeah, it gives a ray I hope of so. hope. Mm -hmm. It does give a ray of hope. The Russians, uh, when U.S. is building underground bunkers for their elites, the Russians and the Chinese were, were building massive underground bunkers for their population. So that's, yes. another, that's another different thing that was happening. Well, the Moscow subway system is part of that. Right. If you've right. ever been on it, it goes down, 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 down forever. And you're like, why is this so far underground? Because it is meant to save the population from nuclear attack. And believe me, I've been on that escalator and I thought I was going to age and die before I got to the bottom. <laughs> you know? But it is that that's far amazing. underground and that's why. And that's wow. a very good point. Also, they're, uh, they're advocating this. Uh, I don't know whether you've ever read the Ringing Cedars books. No, no. Uh, fascinating, different look at what humanity is and and how uh, who's the right sex one, is portrayed. Sir? If you can fall, it's the Ringing Cedars books. Um, it was written by a person who's obviously not a writer, but he was reporting something that uh, he, a person that he had encountered and interviewed. Uh, we we read them and have been in and out of them and interviewing. Uh, Janice Barcello, who's really into them, and she's into trying to uh, create a reality where this could happen. And I think that's Putin. What what I think that's what Putin wants to happen in the northern forest. He's got a wild forest that's as big as the continental United States. Now, granted, the climate isn't well, but uh, it's a beautiful place, and uh, with technological advances and heating and stuff and well, I'm in love with wood stoves, and uh, so so that could happen. So so that's another thing that they're taking. Also, I can remember Mindy and I reading books from the '70s. Uh, we were into ESP and and that kind of thing, and the, the people that were really making advances in this in writing books in the '70s were mm -hmm. the Russians, because they were. Uh, light years ahead in finding out what the brain could actually do, you know, psychokinesis. Yes, that's true. Yes, yeah. I remember reading so they, some of those books too earlier on. Yeah, the parapsychology. They were fascinating. Right? What, you know, why isn't the United States doing it? Well, you know the United States was doing it also. But uh, maybe the Russians find out what, found out what humans really are and uh, the, 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 the U.S. is trying to wipe out what the humans really are because they found them that they have a lot more power than our, our little incarnate selves think we have. We're connected with um, things that uh, are a lot more powerful than directed energy weapons. So, I, you know, the, I, just to throw that into the mix, the, the Russians have a whole different uh, outlook on humans. And, mm. Well, Putin did issue the, the invitation for any American with a Russian uh, um, family, you know, basically had come from Russian lineage. They were free to come back to Russia and they give them land, you know, and he has taken up uh, defending the Christian church, you know, and he's spoken out uh, about at least uh, the last president, not defending Christians around the world. And they were being slaughtered. They're very yeah. overtly being slaughtered. You know, and this country was founded also as a place for persecuted Christians to come. And yet, those are the people not being allowed for the last decade. So something is totally wrong here when you're looking at President Putin and saying, you know, he's actually a better person in regard to world humanity than anybody in the American presidency for the last, oh, I don't know, 10 to 30 years. Now, you know, I will. He seems I, like they 
they've mm-hmm. become enlightened and we've gone into a techno dark ages. Now, now the elites on our side have said that's going to happen. They said that the Russians will become the Americans, the freedom and, the, and all that. And, and the, the Americans will become the, 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 the slave state. And that's, that's what's happening. It makes me think that either they're orchestrating it or they had some inside knowledge of what's happening. I'm not sure these, these people don't time travel. Right. And also, you know, Paul, I mean, I'm sorry, it's just my skeptical little brain popping up over here. It could just be all of it a mass deception, you know, all of it a place of a case of you know, people d- taking turns, in a sense, you know, to, to play the chessboard here. So, mm-hmm. Exactly. Who knows? <laughs> but we seem, to but be, we seem to be the minority. It seems like everybody else is working for them. <laughs> I mean, it seems like if you politicians, your judiciary, the um, well, it seems like it we're comes a, back the old us. Yeah, and again, I think it comes back to all of those secret societies and you know those cliques that are outside and above and beyond act- the actual facade operation that we see of government. You know, so it it has to do, and it has to do ultimately, it seems, with wealth and power and and who knows what else. So. We may be going around in circles because I'm, I'm, I'm again at the point where I'd like to call them psychopaths again. But. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think they're way beyond psychopaths. I yeah. think they're a, they're a separate a breed of something yet. I don't understand. Um, but you know, if you go back to, uh, I suggest Morlocks. Um, we'll go back to Morlocks from the H.G. Wells time right. uh, time travel book. There you go. Do you, do you, uh, Ramola, do you remember the Kurt Vonnegut book we had somebody in the, the chat ask? Uh, the chat ask? Which one? Uh, oh, it's Kurt actually, oh, the Kurt Vonnegut. It's a short story. It's Harrison Bergeron. It's a classic short story. You'll find it in any, you know, Norton anthology of classic short fiction. Um, right. Yeah. I'm not sure that I wouldn't uh, dispatch uh some of the people in the chat to get heavily involved in Kurt Vonnegut because he came at things from such a different perspective that there's mm-hmm. got to be something lodged in there that, that might be able to help us. Mm-hmm. What an incredible uh, writer. Yes, yes. And he, you know, obviously he had such a great sense of humor and a sense of absurdism about it. And he was able to point out, like George Orwell, right? He was able to point out through satire, the horror of what's go- going on and what's gone on. You know, like Slaughterhouse-Five, where he talked about Dresden, the bombing of Dresden and so forth. Yeah, um, he had a lot of insights. I remember I was pretty young when I read um, the book that contains uh, Ice Nine, I can't remember which one it was, but he destroys the world in the end of the book. And I, I walked around for three weeks when, well, you can't do that in a book. Mm. I, I mean, yeah, I haven't read all this destroy the world. Yeah, you know, I, it's, <laughs> but the world's been destroyed <laughs> a lot of times, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, this, you know, at this point, literally, you have to go back to science fiction and satire and dystopian fiction to see everything being played out around us currently, you know. In a sense, we've gone even beyond 1984. We've gone beyond Brave New World. Or, or, you know, definitely aspects of Brave Brave New World in action already. So Minority Report comes to mind. if you want fiction... You want fiction? You go to CNN and you watch the uh, <laughs> Las Vegas false flag. You and watch Anderson Cooper manufacturing it on the spot. And all that, right? Manufactured <laughs> BS news on the spot. Oh dear. Uh, well, I, I like I like to go down this rabbit hole because I it just nothing's making sense right now. Right. Um, to me. Uh, especially about the gang stack. I'm thing. sorry, there that, was major audio interference at this end, so I couldn't quite hear you, Paul. But yeah, I, I didn't hopefully say anything. Karen did. I, I heard. I heard him. Yeah, he said he was saying the gang stock Hello? didn't make sense to him. Yeah, the the, the destruction of the planet. Okay, and somebody's the, having a and all that stuff. That seems to be anybody that's looking forward in history, uh, 
even with the Bible. My audio is being majorly messed with at this point. So all I'm hearing oh, yeah. is all sorts of breakages and distortion and static. No, I'm well, hearing I'm fine. Sure. Yeah, so it must yeah. be broadcasting fine. It's just not hitting a, a Ramola. Yeah. Sometimes when we used to host the show, we, we couldn't hear it, but it was coming along fine. and we. I see. Interesting. So they're doing it to the person who's running it. Okay, yeah. So as long as you guys heard each other, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep checking with the chat. Actually, for some reason, I'm able to keep the conversation and do the chat. This is the first time I've been able to do that. Mm -hmm. I guess it's because I've had an extra cup of coffee this morning. I don't know. <laughs> But it's uh, but I, I can understand the destruction of the world and and they're always flaunting the phoenix as being their uh, their symbol, which is a death and rebirth, or Shiva, which is a death and rebirth, and mm -hmm. even even in the Christian uh, uh, stories, there's the Antichrist and then the and then the rebirth. So it seems like that's the path. But what are, what, why, why hurt you? Why hurt you? Why, why target you guys? Why, uh, what, well, how does this play in with the, with the destruction? Uh, that's, that's my question right now. Well, you know, they've identified us for whatever reason. Huh. Like I said, it's hard to say with psychopaths. Is it uh, a majority of people are RH negative and they're afraid of the, genetics that go with that? Uh, is it just people who have a tendency to be independent minded and honest? Um, we can guess, but we don't have it straight from the horse's mouth. But what they've done too, is they've identified psychopaths in society at every level, people who will do anything for money. And as long as you pat them on the head and tell them that they're special, then it feeds their little narcissistic ego and they have no problem killing their neighbor for a big screen TV. So they've identified two elements in the society through this program. And frankly, if I were an elite after identifying all the psychopaths and getting rid of the independent minded people, I would get rid of the psychopaths too, because they are very much a danger to me. Yep. So then I'm just left with the in-between sheep. Yeah. Well, I think in Catherine's analysis of all this, she agrees with you as well, Karen. She says there's, there's a time in which they're going to start attacking each other. Mm -hmm. The criminals at the top of this pyramid, you know, they're going to start attacking each other. And maybe we are seeing a little bit of that already. For instance, in the Hugh Hefner case, where, which I know we haven't had much time to talk about it, but, you know, Hugh Hefner, I guess the story is that he himself was in the middle of a deal where he was going to be revealing the names of some major pedophiles in Hollywood uh, because he was one himself, so he knew the rest, I suppose. Um, right? He's, so a, each he's, one an he's an interesting cat because he was a psychology, took psychology course in college. Then he went to study with Kinsey. And Kinsey is a major I uh, missed that in time. corruption uh, he was a uh, something? McKinsey. The Kinsey Report. The Kinsey Report was a series of uh, studies done by Kinsey, who was a psychopathic pervert. Um, and, oh, yes. Uh, so, he, took, yeah, so Hefner studied he, he with took him. The, uh, ah, okay. He took the, he kind of took the lid off of a lot of society's sexual conventions. Um, I can remember the one thing about uh, his claim was that 10% of the people on the earth were uh, homosexual. And the way he determined that was through a questionnaire. Well, I saw the questionnaire. Um, the questionnaire was so loosely written that Anybody could be labeled, almost everybody could be labeled a homosexual because they, it was really broad, you know. Have you had uh, warm feelings toward a male, if you're a male? Have you had, you know, and these kind of, it was kind of an ambiguous thing. And I don't know how, for, as, a, as a psychologist, someone could really make those claims from the type of work that he did. But remember that uh, Kinsey was a Tavistock guy. He was, he was... 
he was charged with doing this by the way and, and Hefner of course is his lineage and Kefir, Hefner was uh, put in to uh, corrupt the baby boomer males change their sexuality from uh, uh, monogamous to uh, polygamous uh, he created a new playmate every month well a playmate what are you doing you're playing this is your playmate for this month get serious here so anyway so he was he was he was as deep and dark as as you can imagine and oh, the fact that he was, and dirty and dirty and to think that he would uh, even threaten the pedophile network in Hollywood I, I think is um, is ridiculous if it, I think it I, to my mind and I you know I can be as wrong as anybody I'm probably more wrong than most people because I'll, I'll go down rabbit holes. Other people will go down. But I, I think it was this. They want pedophilia to be in your mind. They want it to be. Everybody knows about pedophilia. Everybody. I think they want you to want you to know that Hollywood's are all involved in pedophiles because we made a video about 18 months ago. Then it talked about all the different uh, things that the APA is doing to uh, legitimize pedophilia. They're bringing it out, bringing it out, bringing it out, and uh, naming it just a disorder, I, I really, right? Not um, not a problem in society. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a preference. It's a preference. If you you know, you might like blondes, or you might like three-year-olds. It's just oh yes, and there's all sorts of nonsense kind of, these days about you know I don't know if there's good cases or little little snippets of news that I recall about um, people daring to suggest that eleven-year-old boys or seven-year-old girls or four-year-old girls all gave consent. Right. Well, <laughs> there's an age of consent in in the U.S. and uh, the age of consent isn't four. Although there was a motion to, I think it was by the PIE, Pedophile International Exchange, which is a legitimate outfit, still exists in the U.S. Not it's a, the no, no, in the U.K. And it's still a, a major lobbying firm, or a lo lobbying agency. And they wanted to reduce the age, I think it was to three, the age of consent. And Below three, they couldn't get, I, I mean, you couldn't get them to consent. Uh, yeah, and if that's not real cr crime, I'd like to know what is. Instead, you've got the local FBI going after outstanding intelligence analysts and outstanding writers and right. journalists and outstanding particle physicists and so on, and pastors and um, nurses and everybody else who's, you know, a community-minded, civic-minded, outstanding, accomplished person in society. We're in the way. If you also, they've done a good job of, of uh, scrubbing Google in terms of the dangers of pedophilia term, to the individual. Um, and what they've done is it's very difficult. I wanted to do a report and, and uh, put some more meaty stuff into this video uh, rather than just testimonials. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find some studies. Well, the studies now are coming out finding that uh, pedophilia has no real lost, lasting damage. And it's actually good for the child because they're having oh, their first Oh, my thing. goodness. Unbelievable. Someone who's, who's uh, Just uh, loving and older and knows their way around uh, genitals and, you know, whatever. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but it's, it's coming. The pedophilia is coming. And, uh, but you see, this is, I, I guess this is why, you know, Perhaps, well, not next time because I want to talk about V2K next time. But maybe the time after that, we can focus on pedophilia again, especially when Catherine is here. And we can talk about this in detail, you know, um, both along the levels of, you know, child sexual abuse, child trafficking, and also organ trafficking, you know, where children are being abused for their bodies and for their body parts around the world. And because this is really a focus on children who are the most, among the most vulnerable sections of our society whom we should all be protecting as adults and for this to be happening and for this to be at the heart really of the entire conspiracy you know of the entire mm. attempt the takeover the entire world takeover this is at the heart pedophilia yeah. and the blackmail surrounding pedophilia and pedo crime 
pedosadism and pedophilia. So and cannibalism. I think yes. Oh, that, might be the, oh. So we should talk the about it. Even though or, or the, these are well, such terrible subjects, you know. It is. I mean, look at the people who are the uh, at the top of the pyramid as far as um, like the Rockefellers and, and whoever with the NWO and they're they're getting transplants, you know, four heart transplants and they're trying to live forever. And part of that is drinking the blood of children. Yeah. So you're going to have absolute. Oh, it's a process. It's Frank a huge process. That I read about. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a youth process where they sleep with the child for several days before getting the transfer. It's a, it's a really disgusting thing. Oh boy! I, I just, you know, I, 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 it's 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 really horrible, and that's uh, that's what's happening. I guess uh, to go back to you, Hefker, though, I think that he, I think to think that yeah. he was going to. So I can. Go ahead. I can't think that he wasn't mind controlled also because I know he's a handler. I know that his playmates, several of them, many of them, well, the one that they killed, uh, what's her name? Uh, oh God, I can't remember. They took her out because they couldn't, they couldn't get the uh, mind control. She kept slipping out. Uh, what the, I can't remember her name, but she died four or five years ago, after having a child to one of the elites. Oh my. She had a child to one of the elites. And um, she had married a man who was 85 years old and died and she inherited it. Well, the elites wanted the money back. And uh, this woman, Nicole, her name, one of her names is Nicole. Uh, Marie Nicole, whatever. Anyway, so. She has, a, she has a child with this elite guy, but she has another child with someone else. Who would inherit the money if she were to die? So they killed the child and her, and the elite, is, and the elite child is left. His blood, he's bloodline, and he's left, left in the whole, uh, getting the whole enchilada at some point. Absolutely. So they still have control of that money. Yeah. Somebody needs so, to take yeah, the whole bunch of them the, out, really. All of these bloodline families, these Illuminati horrors, you know, someone needs to round them up and throw them in jail <laughs> for life. <sighs> no idea who that is. Unfortunately, means. they're rounding us up. Yeah. Anyway, we know they're destroying the world. Anyway. So I wanted and to Nicole, tell you. Anna Nicole Smith, Cactus Juice came up with There it. you go. Ah, Thank okay, you. Anna Nicole I, Smith. Yes, I do know. I have heard of her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She had an older son who died actually before she did. Uh, yeah, Very they took sad. the son out, they took her out, and it leaves the... Uh, I'll tell you who did research on that was uh, Freeman Fly. If you ever go to his stuff. Some of his stuff is... He's, uh, he's an interesting character. He was raised by a Freemason and, and follows a lot of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But he's... A, he, he feels free to jump into really deep stuff and, go, and, and do some really interesting research. What's his uh, name again? I like him. His name's Freeman Fly, Freeman TV. Uh, so, okay. You know, I, I won't advocate everybody totally because I don't know who everybody yeah. works for, but he has done some amazing discovery in the past. So, okay. so short of advocating him, uh, He's got some interesting things. He's the one also that did the Barack Obama Akhenaten picture. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Impossible and to believe. He's done some work as to what, how, see, they, they had that, they have DNA of these mummies. And uh, so, and, but they keep them really under tight wraps because you can create a clone from any DNA. That's why. Uh, supposedly, Madonna has a cleanup crew that comes into theaters after she's there to get everything up because they don't want whoever another faction might be replicating. So anyway, wow. so Freeman. Well, we Fly, don't either. No, no, God knows. We don't Good point. He's a piece of work. We can do a whole interview on that one. Never repl replicate the Rothschilds. Oh, the Rockefellers, oh, please. Geez.
That's it. So they'll probably pay it's me a visit now, now that I've said that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I hope not. I'd be happy to live my life without encountering them. Um, anyway, this is interesting. So we're coming sort of to, you know, 30 minutes past the hour here, so we should probably be wrapping up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's been a very interesting Maybe. conversation, wide ranging as usual. We've got, traveled a lot of little pathways and alleyways here. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. I hope it's been interesting. I think the chat room isn't saying anything. Now they're attacking Madonna. Uh, <laughs> Doug <Cruz. laughs> I'm That's just funny. saying once is enough. <laughs> yeah. Now we've thrown some interesting uh, phones into the chat room and they're having a good time with it. Uh, <laughs> well, there's lots of people who followed in her footsteps, right? I mean, nobody needs to clone her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, just I'm wondering thing. yeah go ahead go ahead another. well I was just going to make a very quick comment about the Rothschilds and all these so-called elites How, have they been cloned and are we looking at the hundredth Xerox copy of the original which is pretty pathetic you know <laughs> genetically when you do that you know you get uh, oh yeah. and not such a clear copy shall we say <laughs> exactly. We will say he wasn't the clearest copy in the stack. Uh, yeah, to start with, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like he's not the sharpest knife in the cutlery set. He's not the clearest clone in the uh, yeah, the elite copy family in the stack. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to know too. Who do the these elites think they're going to marry and reproduce with if they basically? Uh, get rid of anybody with any kind of above average ability or intellect, and then they only keep the sheep. Is it that they think they're gonna clone themselves forever? Because the, the plan has no logic. Well, you see- The plan has no logic. Of course not. But it's all about, it's also about techno-freakism. You know, it's all about, you know, in the future, you won't need humans because you can have a little robotic sex doll. You can have AI LBCI right. chip, you know, to download anything right. you want to know. You can be connected to the internet, the brain internet. So you can have the brain of the internet in your own brain, et cetera. Right. All this nonsense. The only, the only thing they need uh, humans for is sex, and I, I suppose they eat humans. So uh, More those are two to keep us around. But they haven't done it, you know? It's not over. They've never done it before. Oh, I wanted to mention before we get on, my lovely young assistant over here is telling me, uh, I want to mention the portal. The portal is yes. thriving. Uh, there's, there's a lot of really good information in the portal. Excellent. It's not um, anti-Eastern, anti-Western. We're trying to take in an amalgamation of, of different topics. And we talk about it Sunday night, and we're getting some really good comments on those uh, those podcasts. Uh, we what we do is we go over the new entries, some of the new things were brought in, and we've really started a technique of the week. Um, every week, we're Mindy and I are investigating a new uh, technique, and we we might be trying them or just might be helping, hoping someone else tries them for us because there's. You know, this isn't a, a thing where you, oh, I'll try a little bit of this. No, it's something where you really have to get involved in getting deep. I mean, even if it's just prayer, I mean, does it always work? Well, you've got to try it for a while. You've got to work with it. You've got to, you know, all these techniques demand a little bit of attention. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're encouraging people to do that. And you can find that. It's on the, is it on the new Pinecone channel? <laughs> it's on the backup, yes. The backup it's on our backup, backup channel. Now, Pinecone Utopia, we accidentally found an extra Pinecone Utopia channel. It's just spelled differently. It's all one word, Pinecone Utopia channel on YouTube. And join us on Sunday nights. And uh, if either of you are free, call in and uh, I'll uh, just write on the chat and I'll invite you to come on in and you can talk with us. Um, 
but it's 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 I think it's it's helping people. It's a little bit of a different course than uh, than what we're doing here, but there's no. Uh, but it's working out, and uh, mm -hmm. that's it's wonderful. Pinecone, that's wonderful. Pinecone Utopia it's an, Portal. It's a, WordPress .com. It's a needed niche. It's a needed niche. I hope so, and it's it's working out, and we're trying to trying to keep it alive, and more and more interest uh, we get every time. Uh, Things Brian's were frozen here happen. again. Wow. Well, somebody asked if you made me stay in the kitchen today. <laughs> no, I didn't make her stay in the kitchen today. <laughs> she, she, uh, we had a birthday yesterday, and so she gets oh. special privileges. And she decided she didn't want to get gussied up, and <laughs> so she just wants to sit over there and be my lovely young assistant. And so she is. <laughs> All right. Next time, Mindy, let's hope you're on as well. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll, I'll pull her on. I'll pull her into it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we could probably end it. Ramola, we could probably yes, bring okay. it to an end. Yes. Okay. All right. Wonderful. So thanks very much for listening. Thanks for watching. And thanks for being in the chat room. Um, and, you know, next time we'll have um, two or three more very important focuses to get to. One is voice to skull and the other is pedophilia. So, you know, we'll kind of shuffle that up and see how we can work it out. Maybe do it one per. Maybe, maybe Chris. Yeah, Chris. Uh, maybe Chris. Pardon me, Monica. Oh, she's frozen. Yeah, she sure is. Oh, my goodness. Well. Oh, dear. Things well, are sort of. Have... We noticed. <laughs> You're going to have to sign us out. Paul, I guess you Okay, things have sort of frozen at my end, so. All right, so just saying bye. Okay, all right. If anybody has any last words, go for it. If not, I'll just sign off at this point. Say thank you to everybody and see you next time. Bye-bye. Have a great day. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, guys.